Coming up on today's show, the Tesla Model S Plaid snatches the production electric vehicle track record from the Porsche Taycan Turbo on the world-famous Nürburgring, beating the Porsche by nearly 12 seconds, China leads the world in installed offshore wind for 2020, and Elon Musk says that he agrees with ARK Investments' evaluation that Tesla stock could soon be worth $3,000 a share if Tesla executes really well. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to electric vehicles in New Zealand. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. We're starting today's show with a truly impressive new lap time set by a production Tesla Model S Plaid on the world famous Nürburgring in Germany. The attempt made earlier this week with Swedish professional race car driver Andreas Simonsen behind the wheel beat the previous production electric car record by 11.431 seconds. The previous record was set back in 2019 by a Porsche Taycan Turbo. The Tesla Model S Plaid, which by the way had no modifications to its drivetrain for the attempt and was running on road legal shoes, is now officially the quickest production EV to run the course. That said, I should note that Porsche has yet to send its range-topping Taycan Turbo S around the ring, which could claw back some of the 11 plus seconds Tesla stole from Porsche. But the car most likely to steal Tesla's crown? The limited production, oh so expensive, Rimac Nivera, a car that has almost twice the Model S Plaid's power. Sticking with the racing theme, Tesla's current rival on the Nürburgring, Porsche, unveiled its take on an all-electric future for the company's motorsport at the IAA in Munich this week, the Porsche Mission R Concept. An out-and-out -out GT racer, the Mission R Concept pushes all of the right buttons when it comes to what most people look for in a classic GT. Built from the ground up with natural fibre reinforced plastic body panels rather than carbon fibre, which means it results in an 85% smaller carbon footprint, the Mission R is powered by an 82 kilowatt hour, 900 volt battery pack, driving a 4,073 horsepower all-wheel drivetrain. Porsche says it can do the stoplight sprint in two and a half seconds with a top speed of 186 miles per hour. That's 300 kilometers per hour. It's a functional working vehicle which you could imagine going out onto the track any day. And Porsche seems to be hinting that's what we can expect in the future, commenting that the functional prototype previews a race certified vehicle as well as a road going GT version. Be still my beating heart. As we've covered numerous times on this channel, it's now far more affordable for utility companies to commission renewable energy generation capacity than it is for them to install or upgrade fossil fuel based power stations. This week, we learned that last year a total of 6.1 gigawatts of offshore wind generation projects were commissioned. While that's slightly down from the 2019 record of 6.24 gigawatts, I think we can blame COVID, China dominated offshore wind power commissioning for the third straight year, accounting for one half of all new offshore wind generation projects commissioned in 2020. But, warns the Global Wind Energy Council, last year's installed offshore wind is only 11% of the capacity needed to meet global net zero targets by 2050, and only 2% of what we need to actually minimize the effects of anthropogenic climate change. We best get on with it. TikTok. After a long wait and lots of teasing, Renault finally unveiled its latest production electric car, the all-new Renault Megane E-Tech Electric at the IIA in Munich this week. Powered by a next-generation NCM battery that Renault says has been designed to fit into its new CMF EV platform on which the Megane E-Tech Electric is based, Renault will offer two choices of battery capacity, a 40 kilowatt hour or 60 kilowatt hour option, as well as two motor options, 96 kilowatts or 160 kilowatts both of which can charge at up to 130 kilowatts from a compatible charging station. The larger battery promises up to 292 miles, 470 kilometers on the WLTP test cycle and has a new heat pump that promises better winter range performance without sacrificing heat. There's no word on the pricing yet, but expect that very soon. For some time, Tesla has offered customers in certain parts of the US the option to lease or subscribe to Tesla solar energy products rather than buying them outright. 
This made it easier for some customers to be able to afford Tesla solar panels in the first place since you had zero costs up front. But now Tesla has removed subscription options from its online store, shifting instead to the traditional cash or loan options that most solar providers offer. It's not clear what the reasons for this are, but if I had to guess, it's likely high demand for Tesla's energy products combined with less risk for Tesla. Under the subscription model, it was possible to subscribe to Tesla's panels and then cancel it a few months or years down the road, leading to extra headaches for both parties when it came to figuring out how to remove the panels. With solar technology getting cheaper and outright purchases getting more affordable, not to mention the rise in solar loan products, I think solar subscription models are slowly going to disappear anyway. For many years now, anyone wanting a commercial electric vehicle in parts of Europe, New Zealand or Asia have had the option of going for a Nissan ENV200. On sale for nearly as long as the Nissan LEAF, the all-electric variant of Nissan's popular commercial vehicle is available with a wide range of variants, including a high-roofed cargo-oriented variant, a seven-seat people carrier, and a cargo van. But these days, the ENV200 is showing its age, which is perhaps why Nissan is readying to showcase a brand new light commercial vehicle with an all-electric drivetrain. This week, Nissan dropped some teaser videos of the same, showing a vehicle that we think has a lot more Nissan Aria about it than Nissan Leaf. It also looks like Chidemo is well and truly dead outside of Japan and China, with a small, more compact CCS port on the nose. When we have more info, we will share. Multimodal transportation, when you use more than one method of travel to get to your destination, has been a buzzword in the EV and low-carbon transit world for a number of years. But at the IAA this week, Polestar and Cake unveiled a joint project that's a little different to the classic idea of using your car to get to the train station and then letting the train take the strain. A special variant of the Cake Mocha moped that can be towed on a carrier behind a Polestar 2. So far, you think such a combination isn't out of the ordinary. People have been carrying small and medium motorcycles on the back of trailer hitches for decades. But what makes this special is the fact that the Mocha charges while it's being carried, drawing its power from the Polestar 2. It's the perfect combination of car and moped, and while we love the trunk scooter idea Honda did a few years ago, this is also pretty darned cool. Ever since it entered onto the stock market, Tesla's value has continued to soar. And sure, there have been ups and downs, but today Tesla is worth nearly 20,000% more than it was when it launched. By market cap, it's the most valuable automotive company in the world. In the past, Elon Musk has opined that he felt Tesla was overpriced, something that drew some curious stares from some on Wall Street and frustration from investors. But this week, Musk stood beside Wall Street analysis Kathy Wood from ARK Invest, who stated this week that Tesla's base stock price target by 2025 should be $3,000 a share. After Wood told Yahoo Finance that Tesla's performance shows no sign of slowing, Musk wrote in an email to employees that he agrees, stating that, quote, if we execute really well, I agree with ARK Invest. Tesla stock hasn't risen quite yet, but give it time. Canadian battery recycling specialist Lycycle has experienced a massive expansion in the last few years as more and more electric cars hit the road and more and more battery packs need recycling. And this week it's announced the start of construction of a fourth battery recycling facility that it says will be capable of recycling up to 5,000 tonnes of manufacturing scrap and end-of-life batteries per year. The facility will be built in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and will work alongside Mercedes-Benz to recycle manufacturing scrap from its nearby electric vehicle production facility. After their factory is operational, Lifecycle says it will be able to recycle upwards of 25,000 tons per year, but notes that it's designing the new Alabama facility to have the option to double its capacity. It's great to see more recycling for lithium-ion batteries, and it just helps ensure that EVs just keep getting a lower carbon footprint. If you don't live in Europe, then you probably don't know how important the continent's public rail system is. And yes, while the UK rail system is overpriced and often late, mainland Europe's rail system is truly a beauty to behold. Much of the mainland European rail network is electrified with overhead power lines, but for routes where building electrical pylons is problematic, diesel electric engines have traditionally been the go-to. But battery electric trains are on the horizon, and this week Allsom presented its take on the battery electric multiple unit train. Based on a similar chassis to the company's hydrogen fuel cell train, which is what you're actually seeing in this video, the battery electric train can use its onboard batteries or take power from overhead power lines where available. 
just say goodbye to smelly diesel trains. And finally, earlier this week, I had a little rant on this channel after seeing the new Smart Concept No. 1 EV debut at IAA in Munich. <laughs> I won't retell it here, but suffice to say I, and apparently many of you from the comments, felt the Smart Concept No. 1 crossover EV wasn't really a smart car, and many of us were raising a glass to the brand's spiritual death. But just as that was happening, at the very same show, XEV was debuting its take on a city electric car, the XEV Yo-Yo. It's a two-seat EV with a similar footprint to the original Smart for 2 ED, and while it doesn't have the top speed of the Smart, it's limited to around 80 kilometers per hour or 50 miles per hour, has swappable battery packs. Oh, and the best bit? It's 3D printed. That's right, an entire car that is made with 3D printed parts. Cute, efficient, and nerdy, <laughs> sign me up. And on that note, we are done for the day. Make sure that you hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next episode. And if you haven't already switched, please do consider switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. It is super easy to make the switch, and when you do, you'll help New Zealand wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back soon with more great videos for you all to enjoy, but until then, I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time. Thank you.